Hello, inflatable fans. I hope you're all well. Well, I'm back here at Melbourne Basin because I'm planning tonight a camp and a kayak and a camp. You know the idea. Going to my normal place where I normally pitch up, but I'm launching from here today and I'm using the Cirrus, that really ultralight boat. Let's see what we can get in it, eh? Let's do this. There's all the gear and there's the boat. And tonight's game of Tetris is getting all of this into there, as well as me. So we'll look at what we've got, eh? So, fire pit and firewood. My bedding, I've actually put in the bag because it's a really good dry bag. So just to make sure it stays dry. That's my sleep mat. I've brought a really big one tonight because I do want to see what this boat can handle. 100 litre Bergen, food bag, tech bag, and just a bum bag. And there's my floating rig. <laughs> right, let's give it a go. Well, it's in. <laughs> Can the Aquaglide Cirrus take a load? So underneath there, there's the Bergen. There's the bedding on top. I've used the firewood. Couldn't think of the word there for some reason. As a weight to help hold that in place. Obviously you can see the lashes. That's the fire pit. I'm hoping those bag straps hold. It's not heavy. At the front, I've lashed the food bag here onto the bow. And thank God I did, because that's really heavy. The, the, the nose of the boat was right out of the water, so that's actually acted as a counterbalance there. Tech bag, bum bag. Just me to get in now. Well, I'm in. Well, I don't think I have ever been quite so uncomfortable as I am right now. Now I won't be taking much footage of the trip because, well basically, if I put the camera on the side of the boat, all you're gonna see is all the gear. I am planning on going a bit further tomorrow. So I'm gonna come back here, dump the gear, and then explore a bit of this canal that I've never explored before. Anyway, I think what I'll do is this. Oh no, hang on, priorities. Yeah. Come in handy to these uh, safety knives sometimes. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, I had to just show you that bit. <laughs> that was really low. I was worried that uh, underneath that bridge, I might not be able to get my uh, head and gear under. Anyway, while I'm here, one of the things that is surprising me is just how much more weed there is that's come up over the last few weeks. Don't know if you saw the video, but I was last on here about mm, three weeks ago. Yeah, starting to weed up already. Just crashed. This isn't doing me speed stats any good. <laughs> Gotta say, this is probably the most uncomfortable paddle I've ever done. <laughs> Moving along nicely though, when I am moving, I'm moving along at around 3 miles an hour, 2.8, 2.93, I've just hit 3.3 at one point, 3.1, so yeah, it's not too bad at all really. Yeah, you know, it could be an awful lot worse. Absolutely glorious evening. It's spring bank holiday weekend as I record this. Anyway, Carl, stop yammering and get paddling. It is, as I, he says yammering away, uh, it is uh, quarter past six, so I've got three hours until sunset. We're not too far off Garden Lock now. Got a hankering to uh, give the camera a dunk. Wonder what it saw. Oh, some lilies there, let's have a look at those. It's 
a bit different, isn't it? What does that say on me Crocs? Subs cried. Yeah, that's a bit cheeky, isn't it? <laughs> Here it is, look, roughly centre screen, base for the night. And I'm glad because, oh God, I'm uncomfy. <laughs> oh my God, have you seen this soup I'm in though? <laughs> I drifted into it without even realising, look at that. Oh my God, all the way up to the lock gate. Yeah, it's definitely not going to be long before this canal is unnavigable again. Bugger. Ugh, clarty paddle. I know you like to see me buns when I'm getting out of the boat, but you'll see enough of them later. Thankfully, my excessively long mooring lines reach that bench. Well, it looks like the grass has been cut since I was last here. Right, let's get everything off here. Not bad, eh? So that dinky little Aquaglide Cirrus Ultralight 110 has carried all of that here, yeah. I think that's quite impressive, actually. It's done really well. Anyway, look at that. What an absolutely glorious evening. I'm not worried about leaving the the, uh, the boat out behind me because the sun is already heading behind those trees and as you can see it's in the shade. Running water, fire pit, food, beer, wine, what's not to like? Right, I'm in the Quechua tonight and I've never actually slept in this yet. I reviewed it, when, uh, well overviewed it, about a year ago and it's a, quite a popular video and this is the first opportunity I've had to get it out. So I've got it pitched, looks alright, it's not bad. Well, I've got the bed set up, let's have a look. So I'm on the Berghaus Air. It is a big mat is this, it takes up a huge section of the tent, literally from the, uh, from the top to the bottom. <laughs> and then, yes, my knitted sleeping bag's doing a, another visit back out with this. One tigress down blanket just for a bit of extra feathers, feathers, get some feathers on it. Yeah, for feathers. <laughs> right, and in the interest of full disclosure, I do also have that down sleeping bag with me, the Rab Ascent 500, just in case. You never know, do you? It's gonna be all right though, it's gonna be cozy. I'm actually looking forward to this because I haven't slept in a tent for quite some time. Decided to get the fire going because there's a few mozzies knocking around and the smoke will obviously help deter them. And I realised I've dropped a right clanger tonight. I have completely forgotten to pack any pans. The only thing I've got is a British Army, or is it Dutch Army? I can't, a Dutch Army steel mug. <laughs> That's going to be an interesting one. What a doofus. On the plus side, there's always beer. Those guys just walking off there. They own the farm that's uh, on this land here behind me. Yeah, over that way. Oh, somebody walking over there. I've done a bit of foraging and I did find some dead wood which is burnt in there. But I also found this. And I thought if I put two bits of wood on there just to act as a brace, I might be able to burn this. It's only one way to find out, isn't there? It might work and it'll make my firewood last a bit longer. So, tea, I think I ought to crack on. So there's no way I'm getting all of that into there. So I think I might have to double portion it, I think. Don't think I got much of the flavouring in that lot. But thankfully I did bring an additional secret ingredient. You might wonder why I'm not using the fire. Yeah, that's why I didn't really space at the minute. <laughs> right, that's bubbling away nicely. So I think we'll add a bit of the chicken in. 
Oops. Two second rule. It's gonna be alright. We're gonna survive the night. This is good by the way. Round two. Secret ingredient. This second batch is better than the first. <laughs> anyway, another news, that big log is starting to uh, to bite a bit. As I say, tonight's slop, it's doing all right, it's hitting the spot. Beer or wine, beer or wine, beer or wine. Look at that, doesn't that look good now? <laughs> oh yeah. Anyway, I've made the decision, wine it is. And I remembered to bring, you know, a posh wine glass and pudding, at least. It's all right. As I say, and pudding. Did you used to like eating jelly cubes when you were a kid? <laughs> Quite a nice sunset going on over there. This camera's not gonna do it justice though. Lovely. <laughs> There's gonna have some heat coming from this. I'm having to move back. It's very quiet tonight. Last time I was here, there was all sorts of weird animal noises and curlews and other birds and so on. Very quiet tonight. In other news, there's only one last bit of wood to go on at some point. Currently just gone 20 past 11. It's been a very peaceful night. Ah, what the hell. Well, ladles and jelly spoons. The fire's dying, it's midnight. I think it's time to hit the sack. Now, considering this didn't work earlier, let's try it now. Woke up about an hour ago. I've been laid here for a while. Really warm in this knitted bag with the down uh, blanket tonight. Really warm. I might as well get up and start knocking around, I think, because I'm not going to get back to sleep. Just want to say, I really like this little tent. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's ambitious. Two, yeah, right. <laughs> Be lucky. No porch, which is a bit of a jiggy. I mean, you could get some shoes in there, but that's about it. So I did in the night, I did actually have all my gear down the side and I had ample room on that side. I mean, that is a big mat. 76 centimeters wide, this particular mat. Love it, really comfortable. One I use in the car actually for car camping, but hey, that's a different story. Uh, but yeah, I really like this little tent actually. It was quite uh, quite cool. I guess my only gripe would be, with it being light sided, it does feel quite bright on a morning. You see, you sense the light earlier, but good ventilation, no condensation, cracking. That's my geocache checked. Right, well, while I paddle through this soup, um, I'm not actually planning on filming much on the trip back, predominantly because I'm planning on dumping all the stuff in, into the car and then going, I think I've already mentioned this, having a paddle on a part of this canal I've never been on before. All right, so I've emptied the boat. It is moving a hell of a lot faster, as you might imagine. It feels so much lighter. <laughs> and now we're just leaving Melbourne Basin again. So this time, I'm gonna head right. As I say, uncharted territory for me, this one. Well, I'll tell a lie. There's a bridge up ahead in the distance, center screen, and I've been as far as that. And then there's a lock. And I have actually done, a, I put a tent on there and did a little stove test on that area. 
but I've never actually paddled kind of beyond that. So that's where we're going today. And we just look at it out here, it's just gorgeous. Anyway, let's get to that bridge. All right, there we go. Now just through that bridge, there's a lock. A little bit of a headwind slash crosswind today. Well, that should make for a slightly easier trip back. And now we come to the reason why I really wanted to do this today, because I wanted to see how easy it is to portage this boat. Because I do have some other trips planned where there's a bit more portaging. Now let's get it out. I think the mooring's just over there. Although I did have to stop there, just look at all that growth underneath the water there. This actually brings me to a really important point. The reason you can see that without any reflections is, I've put a polarising lens on this camera, and I actually, do, if I take my sunglasses off, these are polarising, there's a lot more glare, but because they're polarised, you can see through into the water. And this is having the same effect, I can see on the screen at the back. That's cool, that's really good to know this works. Yeah, that was really easy. <laughs> nice. So, uncharted territory. One things I have noticed about this boat I particularly like is, you see I just went over that weed. Well, that tends to catch on a lot of skegs. On just about every boat I've got, if you go over weed, it kind of catches underneath and you can feel it dragging. Good skeg, this one. It's a bit smoother and a, just a different shape to the standard ones. And yeah, works better going through weed. I know you're all thinking about how much you love my crop. <laughs> I hope the camera's picking up all those fish swimming. This is so clear here, it's unbelievable. How shallow it is. I am absolutely fascinated here. You see all those little skaters on top of the water. Why have I never been this far before? It's lovely. Right, let's get to that bridge. All right, here we are, Walbert Bridge. Walbert, that's the one. I think we have to get out on the left here. You hear all that water running over the, uh, the lock gates there. Don't be checking out my buns. Just while I was moving the boat, I just thought I'd show you this. Like, see what I mean about the shape of that skeg? It's got a lovely curve on it, so nothing catches, just drifts off. So yeah, I've been here before, Walbert Lock, lovely area, and we're going over there, again look at that, all that underwater growth, there's loads of little fishes swimming amongst it, stop buggering about Cal. <laughs> Now at some point this canal does become completely unnavigable, not because of growth and so on, but because it just kind of reaches an end. It's fascinating how it changes in every section. Look at this one, it's all lilies. It's like a different world under the water there. 
Tell you what, I am so glad I've done this this morning. I can't stop looking under the water. It's just fascinating. <laughs> and so clear. Paddling through carpet, this. <laughs> and heading in the distance, I can see a spring bridge. So let's get there. And here we are. <laughs> a low one, but not too low. Nats. Now I've done two miles since left uh, Melbourne Basin and do you know what? Actually I'm just gonna spin round. Just again, nice little areas to pitch a tent. Quiet in the countryside. I do need to check it on uh, Google Maps to see what's in the area, but unfortunately it's not gonna be this time of year though. It's gonna be winter time. I do this one. A, because it's going to be unnavigable due to the growth. And B, because of the midges and stuff that's going to be around soon. Still, I really don't think I could have caught this on a better day than today. It's just stunning. Absolutely stunning. You see that sign? It says Head of Canal. No navigation beyond this point. There is, I don't know what that is down there. But perhaps more importantly, there's a swan up there. And I don't know whether it's a couple, I don't know whether there's a nest, and I don't know whether there's young. And that says to me this is as good a time as any to turn around. Oh yeah. I think that swan's on his own, to be honest with you. But I'm not going to chance it. Um, I know I could go a bit further up there, because that... Look at that, with the sun behind me. What a professional. <laughs> I'm just going to continue talking. I know I could go a bit further that way because that head of canal sign is for boats, um, narrow boats. I really don't know where that drain goes. I'm going to have a look at all this on Google Maps, I think, just so I've got a better idea what's going on in the area. Anyway, with the sun completely in the wrong direction, I am going to wrap this up there. I'm not going to film the paddle back purely because I think this is quite a long video as it is. And all it remains, all that remains to say, if I can actually say it, is you know what to do if you like what I'm doing on this channel. I'm really enjoying this Aquaglide Cirrus. Still think the bag is naff. If you've seen the video last week, it's naff and ace in equal measures. Ace because it's a really good storage and dry bag. Naff because it doesn't do what you need it to do for this type of boat, which is make it easy to carry certainly for any distance. Anyway, I'm rambling. You take care of yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Cheerio.